connecting like you know to your homeland as an adult. It's just different. It hits you different. from Jean Men. Today is our last day here and before we head out, let's have some breakfast. After we returned our rental car, we headed to the ferry station. Here is the station. It is really, really cute. Hey, we're taking the boat from Jean Men. We just arrived in Xiamen. So now we're headed to our restaurant for lunch. And as we're driving there, I noticed that Xiamen is so sunny, so warm, lots of beautiful palm trees and high rises. For lunch, we found a really cute hole in the wall restaurant called Precious Restaurant. And we were so shocked. This place has no reviews online, but the food is definitely 10 out of 10. In Chinese, we call these restaurants Tang Ying Xiao Guo, which literally means a fly restaurant. Now that we're really full from that wonderful lunch, we are on our way to the hotel. The view, the view. is amazing. Oh my gosh. You can see the whole skyline. This is incredible. Gave us a gave free us a upgrade. Free green bean pie. <gasps> oh my gosh! So now we're walking on Zhongshan Lu, which is one of the oldest commercial walking streets in Xiamen, dating back to 1925. This street is filled with vendors selling all kinds of street foods, stalls selling bubble tea, and other local Xiamen specialties. There's such a diverse array of stores and cafes and cute restaurants. You're bound to find something that you like. They even hand out free samples too. This street has a beautiful combination of European style and Chinese style architecture. I feel like it's a really great pedestrian street if you're ever visiting Xiamen. Now that we've explored some of the city, let's go to the beach. Air here is so clean. The water is so clean. The it's so peaceful. Is so pristine. You know, I'm from northern China, and I always imagine winter to see harsh and cold and polluted, but this is beautiful. While we were chilling on the beach, there was a lady selling tanghulu, and I had to try it. Mm. <laughs> Shortly after I started munching on that delicious tanghulu, a live streamer was setting up to perform on the beach. It was so cool Wait, to see that life? young people in China are getting creative with their side hustles. <laughs> to your homeland as an adult. It's just different. It hits you different. Yeah. Hearing songs in your native language, you know, even though like you haven't spoken it for such a long time. Yeah. I don't know. Talk about a truly stunning sunset. After we watched the sunset, we walked around and saw these beautiful twin towers that were lit up. And now we're at dinner. I never struggled so much with ordering seafood because I'm actually Chinese. So I have no idea like, what the spending meant. I saw we got regular clams and we got those sea snails that we can suck out. So unfortunately that it's a funny experience, but we got some, um, you know, garlic roasted squid. Amazing. Very fresh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
very fresh. Mm. All right, good morning. Today is day two and our final day in Shaman. Now that we've gotten ready, we are at the breakfast buffet at the hotel and look at this amazing array of American and Chinese and shaman specific and breakfast items. It's truly stacked breakfast buffet. All right, we got our breakfast. Is it good? Satay sauce really good. Yeah? Is the satay sauce the one with the chicken? Yes. Ooh. This one? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> All right, time to eat. We just arrived at the Overseas Chinese Museum. Both come from overseas Chinese families, so we really wanted to make it a point to come here. Oh, during the uh, McCarthy era in 1950, a group of Chinese scientists returned from San Francisco to China. So after the Opium War, Unequal treaties. Remember when I told you foreign law applied, foreign law applied in like the concessions? Yes. Yeah. So this is the Maritime Silk Road, and it exported things like ceramics and tea and silk and ironware. And this is the Land Silk Road. And we found a beautiful. Uh, replica of lots of different types of small businesses that overseas Chinese would set up ranging from you know a little tea shop and porcelain shop um, to a rice shop this is another hairdresser this is a bookstore, bookstore. Chinese medicine shop dentist and ooh, movie theater movie theater Wow. Restaurant. This is a restaurant. Wow. This shows like how entrepreneurial that the overseas Chinese were. You know, once they were able to settle into their country and have more access to capital, they were able to set up all these amazing businesses. This sets the foundation for the modern day Chinatowns, right? Now we're going upstairs and we found these amazing murals of Chinatown throughout history. So starting from 1890 in San Francisco to 19, uh, 1920 at Yokohama, Japan to 1930s in Singapore. Um, you got Chinatown in 1950, New York City. Um, again, Kobe in 1987. 1995 in Amsterdam and finally Chinatown London 2015. Here we're walking into a photo exhibition of the Chinese community overseas and we see a lot of photographs of community events, culture events, weddings. Um, I see most of these photos are from Singapore. Here you got a wedding photo of the Chinese family in the 1920s. Um, you know, other photos of everyday life. It's just so interesting to glimpse into the lives of people who are as old as our grandparents. These were the pioneers of you know, a lot of us overseas Chinese people today, I mean, they set the foundations for um, the prosperity of the future generations. So this was really, really cool to see. And as you can see, a lot of them had really humble beginnings. Yet it's so amazing to see a lot of the traditional Chinese holidays, customs being preserved. Um, here you see photos of people celebrating Chinese New Year buying mooncakes for the mid-autumn festival, celebrating Chinese weddings. You see a lot of old uh, traditional Chinese marriage certificates, uh, the double happiness character. And here you see a statue of a young couple getting married. It's just so cool to, you know, just reflect about my, you know, our family's heritage. 
they've gone through a lot of hardship. Yeah, I think the common theme that I saw across our families as well as all the families that immigrated um, you know, from China to overseas countries is that they struggled a lot and made a lot of sacrifices and our families have done the same thing. And so it's really interesting to just see the product of that like the museum didn't just focus on the hardship and the struggle the museum also you know captured a lot of the amazing accomplishments and things to be proud of of being overseas chinese and i think that was a really great way to you know frame it spot in the road and it's literally built on top of like a railroad in a sense like railroad culture museum and apparently like it's like a pedestrian street and you can all walk all the way here to like different parts and stuff and pa, um you know he was working the chinese railway for traveled all over china in the 1950s and i think he would love this place he might even know about it uh, i love this city yeah you love xiamen <laughs> But, you know, the landscaping in China is something else. Yeah. It's a different way. Whoa, look at that fiddle leaf fig. It's huge. I love Amoy. Amoy is a name for salmon. And, uh, I mean, that's why. Inside the Railroad Tunnel Museum, we have signs describing the history of the railroad in Fujian province. Um, for those of you who don't know, Fujian is a very mountainous province and is actually one of the last provinces in China to get a railroad. We came across a very hidden gem in the city of Xiamen, uh, Hongshan Gongyuan, and is literally a park um, on a mountain top essentially. And it's really nicely designed where there's all these steps and waterfalls and bridges and temples and the view is so beautiful no matter where you're standing in the park, isn't it? At first it, we struggled a little bit to get up there because we're still jet lagged and tired but once we got to the top it is so beautiful. You get amazing views of the city, um, you have temples and there's even um, a really cute kitty. There were some stray cats that we saw during our hike up the mountain and I really, really thought they were so cute, but we unfortunately can't take them home with us. Yes, um, more climbing. We're almost at the top. Um, we are at the top and here you can look across and see the skyline of Xiamen. Um, we encountered some really friendly locals up here actually. We were up here taking photos and some locals saw us and were willing to take our photo for us after we took some photos of them and it was just really heartwarming to have that interaction. Definitely and we're just up here enjoying the view. Um, the local told us actually no tourists ever come here. It's really sad that tourists don't really come here, but I appreciate that we were able to stumble upon a local spot just by wandering around the city. And here we are having some tea. There's a little cute tea shop around here. Mm -hmm. Next stop, Zhongshan Park. So we're walking around this beautiful park and it is so green, so lush, so well kept. And a pleasant surprise we see is all of these older Chinese men and women, they're playing card games to Chinese chess and mahjong. And it is so nice to see that in China, the sense of community these people have with one another because the way the public spaces are designed, they're designed with the people in mind. What are the people's hobbies? What are their interests? What are the things that are going to make them feel like they're part of a larger community? So next, we visited the Xiamen Botanical Garden. To get around the Botanical Garden, they offer these electric shuttles. 
only really had time to visit the rainforest part of the botanical garden, which you can see here. It was so misty. It felt like you were in a movie almost. Um, but if you come to this botanical garden, I would recommend spending a couple hours here at least so that you can go see the other parts of the park. So now our shaman adventures are coming to an end and we're leaving the botanical garden to head to the airport. Freshly made like shaman satay noodles. First, airport satay noodles. Oh my god. Yo, this is better than the duck we had. Oh my god. Wow. It does have like it? peanut flavor. Yeah. Try the try the try the fish balls. Fish I know your grandma's fish balls are the best, but <laughs> These are Fujoni style. Yo. Hmm? These are my grandma's fish. Wait, really? That's a wrap on Xiamen. Stay tuned for our next video for.